Hi, Conscious Leaders. Happy Mindful Monday. I hope your weekend was wonderful and that you're really utilizing the tools. Of course, feel free to ask me any questions that are coming up along the way. And I was thinking actually about what are the things that actually take us below the line. And there's a word that I frequently use in coaching called triggering, where you may have heard this before, like, oh my gosh, she totally triggered me or so on and so forth. People might use it in that kind of way. And the way that I look about triggering is that we basically time travel. We're no longer in present time. And it could be anything. It could be a certain look that somebody gives us. It could be something that somebody says. It could be a certain smell. It could be a certain sound, like music or something like that, that takes us to a time, a memory <clears throat> that's ensconced in our being. And so this can be good, and this can be something that brings us below the line. And so that's the one that I want to discuss right now. Because I think about it like that when we experience these certain triggers, which <clears throat> trigger certain traumas or experiences in our lives, and depending on how big those were in our lives, really that's going to determine oftentimes how quickly we can move above the line, as well as how conscious we are in that moment, in addition to what else is occurring. And so being aware of the certain things that trigger us is huge. It's so important. And, and the more that we are aware that, oh, right now I'm actually not present and what this person is saying right now or what this person is doing right now is actually taking me back to a time in my life when my teacher reprimanded me, when my mother said that to me or the way that my father was. And <clears throat> that really can make a significant difference to how we're showing up in that moment. So I'll give you an example, and this might sound, sound really silly, but it's, it happens, we get triggered all day long. So I, when I was in fifth grade, and this is kind of a ridiculous story, but I was in fifth grade, I had really long hair, and my mom took me to get my hair cut, and without telling me, they literally chopped it off, like boy cut. And I don't have hair that can be boy cut. And so my hair was about out to here, and in my fifth grade picture, it was off the picture, like fro. And it was horrible. It was horrible for me. It was a horrible experience. And so to this day, when I go get my hair cut, my hairstylist knows after being with her for 15 years that I don't like my hair cut. And I, I'm like, take a tiny bit off each time. And so, you know, each time she does it, you know, the other night I got my hair cut. And that evening I realized I was like, I started to have anxiety about it. I started to freak out and I was like, oh my gosh, it's that moment, right? I know that it's not a big deal. I know that on a conscious level. It was that moment of going back in time, that little girl of feeling that shame and, and feeling awful and feeling, you know, just made fun of and all these other things, all the different stories that were happening in the moment. And so it was an opportunity for me personally to go, okay, I get it. I see it. I'm below the line. I acknowledged and validated where I was. And then also I asked myself what shift of perspective could take me above the line. And it was that, that kindness toward myself and also remembering that I am not the little girl and, and everything like that. And then also when it comes to somebody else, um, when I was living with, with a roommate one time and I, um, I was raised with a mother who was very... She was very controlling, and then I, my stepmother was also very controlling and very overbearing in the sense of that just watched everything we did, and everything had to be in a certain place exactly the same way, and uh, <clears throat> and it was really interesting because I had just gone away and visited a friend who was like that the entire time, and then I came home, and in a moment, I felt that from my roommate at the time because of what she was doing. She was she was responding in that way too, being kind of controlling about what I was doing and the way I was entering the house. And I stopped for a moment and I realized I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I just got so frustrated and I felt an anger inside of myself. So it was a lot of my thoughts and, and feelings that started to come up to show me. And I realized I needed to walk away in that moment. And I was like, okay, this is actually triggering me. This is not her. She's not doing anything right now to me. What's happening is that I have a problem. I have my own issue around people trying to control me and feel overbearing. She wasn't trying to do that in that moment. And even if she was, that was for me to be with, right? And so it was an opportunity for me to recognize. So I went downstairs and I just said, hey, I just want you to know that I recognize that I had an attitude there. And I took full responsibility. I said, you know, my, my, my mother was like this. My stepmother was like this. And in that moment, you became her. And I want to just acknowledge that and I want to just let you know that I want to work on this because I don't want to project that onto you that that's what, that's what I'm experiencing. 
So it was really wonderful because we had the opportunity to get clear. I had the opportunity to communicate my truth. I had an opportunity to be kind to where, to where I was and also respectful of the way she is. And so really knowing the things that trigger us and becoming aware, they stop us from blaming somebody else, projecting out to other people, and and they'll really allow us to take full responsibility and get true and in present time. So hopefully that's useful. Maybe this week start to really look at the things and the, the things and the people and the ways in which you are triggered. And knowing that is, again, really huge. So feel free to reach out with any questions, and I will see you soon. (laughs) Have a great week.